We are in 1 Kings chapter 5. Solomon builds the temple. King Hiram of Tyre had always been a loyal friend of David. When Hiram learned that David's son Solomon was the new king of Israel, he sent ambassadors to congratulate him. Then Solomon sent this message back to Hiram. You know that my father David was not able to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord, his God, because of the many wars waged against him by surrounding nations. He could not build until the Lord gave him victory over all his enemies. But now the Lord my God has given me peace on every side. I have no enemies. And all is well. So I am planning to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, just as he had instructed my father David. For the Lord told him, Your son, whom I will place on your throne, will build a temple to honor my name. Therefore, please command that cedars from Lebanon be cut for me. Let my men work alongside yours, and I will pay your men whatever wages you ask. As you know, there is no one among us who can cut timber like you Sidonians. When Hiram received Solomon's message, he was very pleased and said, Praise the Lord today for giving David a wise son to be king and of this very great nation Israel. Then he sent this reply to Solomon. I have received your message and I will supply all the cedars and cypress timber you need. My servants will bring the logs from the Lebanon mountains to the Mediterranean Sea and make them into rafts and float them along the coast to whatever place you choose. Then we will break the rafts apart so you can carry the logs away. You can pay me by supplying me with food for my household. So Hiram supplied as much cedar and cypress timber as Solomon desired. In return, Solomon sent him an annual payment of 100,000 bushels of wheat for his household and 110,000 gallons of pure olive oil. So the Lord gave wisdom to Solomon just as he had promised, and Hiram and Solomon made a formal alliance of peace. Then King Solomon conscripted a labor force of 30,000 men from all of Israel. He sent them to Lebanon in shifts, 10,000 every month so that each man would be one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of the labor force. Solomon also had 70,000 common laborers, 80,000 quarry workers in the hill country, and 3,600 foremen to supervise the work. At the king's command, they quarried large blocks of high-quality stone and shaped them to make the foundation of the temple. Men from the city of Gibal helped Solomon and Hiram's builders prepare the timber and stone for the temple. Chapter 6, Solomon Builds the Temple It was in mid-spring in the month of Ziv, during the fourth year of Solomon's reign, that he began to construct the temple of the Lord. This was 480 years after the people of Israel were rescued from their slavery in the land of Egypt. The temple that King Solomon built for the Lord was 90 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 45 feet high. The entry room at the front of the temple was 30 feet wide, running across the entire width of the temple. It projected outward 15 feet from the front of the temple. Solomon also made narrow, recessed windows throughout the temple. He built a complex of rooms against the outer walls of the temple, all the way around the sides and rear of the building. The complex was three stories high, the bottom floor being seven and a half feet wide, the second floor nine feet wide, and the top floor ten and a half feet wide. The rooms were connected to the walls of the temple by beams resting on ledges built out from the wall, so the beams were not inserted into the walls themselves. The stones used in the construction of the temple were finished at the quarry, so there was no sound of hammer, axe, or any other tool at the building site. So he didn't let any of these tools be at the site where they were building the temple. The entrance to the bottom floor was on the south side of the temple. There were winding stairs going up to the second floor and another flight of stairs between the second and third floors. After completing the temple structure, Solomon put in a ceiling made of cedar beams and planks. I love spiral staircases. That was probably very beautiful. Definitely very beautiful. 
As already stated, he built a complex of rooms along the sides of the building attached to the temple walls by cedar timbers. Each story of the complex was seven and a half feet high. Then the Lord gave this message to Solomon. Concerning this temple you are building, if you keep all my decrees and regulations and obey all my commands, I will fulfill through you the promise I made to your father David. I will live among the Israelites and will never abandon my people Israel. So Solomon finished building the temple. The entire inside from floor to ceiling was paneled with wood. He paneled the walls and ceilings with cedar and he used planks of cypress for the floors. He partitioned off an inner sanctuary, the most holy place, at the far end of the temple. It was 30 feet deep and was paneled with cedar from the floor to the ceiling. The main room of the temple outside of the most holy place was 60 feet long. Cedar paneling completely covered the stone walls throughout the temple, and the paneling was decorated with carvings of gourds and open flowers. He prepared the inner sanctuary at the far end of the temple where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant would be placed. This inner sanctuary was 30 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 30 feet high. He overlaid the inside with solid gold. He also overlaid the altar made of cedar. Then Solomon overlaid the rest of the temple's interior with solid gold. And he made gold chains to protect the entrance to the most holy place. So he finished overlaying the entire temple with gold, including the altar that belonged to the most holy place. He made two cherubim of wild olive wood, each 15 feet tall, and placed them at the inner sanctuary. The wingspan of each of the cherubim was 15 feet, each wing being seven and a half feet long. The two cherubim were identical in shape and size. Each was 15 feet tall. He placed them side by side in the inner sanctuary of the temple. Their outspread wings reached from wall to wall, while their inner wings touched at the center of the room. He overlaid the two cherubim with gold. He decorated all the walls of the inner sanctuary and the main room with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. He overlaid the floor in both rooms with gold. For the entrance to the inner sanctuary, he made double doors of wild olive wood with five-sided doorposts. These double doors were decorated with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. The doors, including the decoration of cherubim and palm trees, were overlaid with gold. Then he made four-sided doorposts of wild olive wood for the entrance of the temple. There were two fold folding doors of cypress wood, and each door was hinged to fold back upon itself. These doors were decorated with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, all overlaid evenly with gold. I bet you that was so marvelous. The walls of the inner courtyard were built so that there was one layer of cedar beams between every three layers of finished stone. The foundation of the Lord's temple was laid in mid-spring in the month of Ziv during the fourth year of Solomon's reign. The entire building was completed in every detail by mid-autumn in the month of Bull. B-U-L, Bull, during the 11th year of his reign. So it took seven years to build the temple. Chapter 7, Solomon builds his palace. Solomon also built a palace for himself and it took him 13 years to complete the construction. One of Solomon's buildings was called the place, the palace of the forest of Lebanon. It was 150 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. There were four rows of cedar pillars, and great cedar beams rested on the pillars. The hall had a cedar roof. Above the beams on the pillars were 45 side rooms, arranged in three tiers of 15 each. On each end of the long hall were three rows of windows facing each other. All the doorways and door posts had rectangular frames and were arranged in sets of three, facing each other. Solomon also built the hall of pillars, which was 75 feet long and 45 feet wide. There was a porch in front along with a canopy supported by pillars. Solomon also built the throne room, known as the hall of justice, where he sat to hear legal matters. It was paneled with cedar from floor to ceiling. Solomon's living quarters surrounded a courtyard behind this hall, and they were constructed the same way. He also built similar living quarters for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had married. 
From foundation to eaves, all these buildings were built from huge blocks of high quality stone, cut with saws and trimmed to the exact measure on all sides. Some of the huge foundation stones were 15 feet long and some were 12 feet long. The blocks of high quality stone used in the walls were also cut to measure and cedar beams were also used. Between were also used. The walls of the great courtyard were built so that there was one layer of cedar beams between every three layers of finished stone, just like the walls of the inner courtyard of the Lord's temple with its entry room. King Solomon then asked for a man named Huram to come from Tyre. He was half Israelite since his mother was a widow from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father had been a craftsman in bronze from Tyre. Huram was extremely skillful and talented in any work of bronze, and he came to do all the metal work for King Solomon. Huram cast two bronze pillars, each 27 feet tall and 18 feet in circumference. For the tops of the pillars, he cast bronze capitals, each 7.5 feet tall. Each capital was decorated with seven sets of lattice work and interwoven chains. He also encircled the lattice work with two rows of pomegranates to decorate the capitals over the pillars. The capitals on the columns inside the entry room were shaped like water lilies and they were six feet tall. The capitals on the two pillars had 200 pomegranates and two rows around them beside the rounded surface next to the lattice work. Hiram set the pillars at the entrance of the temple, one towards the south and one towards the north. He named the north, the one on the south, Jachin, and the one on the north, Boaz. The capitals on the pillars were shaped like water lilies, and so the work of the pillars was finished. Then Hiram cast a great round basin, 15 feet across from rim to rim, called the sea. It was seven and a half feet deep and about 45 feet in circumference. It was encircled just below its rim by two rows of decorative gourds. There were about six gourds per foot all the way around, and they were cast as part of the basin. The sea was placed on a base, 12 bronze oxen, all facing outward. Three faced north, three faced west, three faced south, and three faced east, and the sea rested on them. The walls of the sea were about three inches thick and its rim flared out like a cup and resembled a water lily blossom. It could hold about 11,000 gallons of water. Hmm. Huram also made 10 bronze water carts, each six feet long, six feet wide, and four and a half feet tall. They were constructed with side panels braced with crossbars. Both the panels and the crossbars were decorated with carved lions, oxen, and cherubim. Above and below the lions and oxen were wreathed decorations. Each of these carts had four bronze wheels and bronze axles. There were supporting posts for the bronze basins at the corners of the carts. These supports were decorated on each side with carvings of wreaths. The top of each cart had a rounded frame for the basin. It projected at one and a half feet above the cart's top like a round pedestal, and its opening was two and a quarter feet across. It was decorated on the outside with carvings of wreaths. The panels of the carts were square, not round. Under the panels were four wheels that were connected to axles that had been cast as one unit with the cart. The wheels were two and a quarter feet in diameter and were similar to chariot wheels. The axle spokes, rims, and hubs were all cast from molten bronze. There were handles at each of the four corners of the carts, and these two were cast as one unit with a cart. Around the top of each cart was a rim nine inches wide. The corner supports and side panels were cast as one unit with a cart. Carvings of cherubim, lions and palm trees decorated the panels and corner supports wherever there was room and there were wreaths all around. All 10 water carts were the same size and were made alike for each was cast from the same mold. Huram also made 10 smaller bronze basins, one for each cart. Each basin was six feet across and could hold 220 gallons of water. He set five water carts on the south side of the temple and five on the north side. The great bronze basin called the sea was placed near the southeast corner of the temple. He also made the necessary wash basins, shovels, and bowls. Hmm. 
So at last, Huram completed everything King Solomon had assigned him to make for the temple of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the two networks of interwoven chains and that decorated the capitals, the 400 pomegranates that hung from the chains on the capitals, two rows of pomegranates for each of the chain networks that decorated the capitals on top of the pillars. Then 10 water carts holding the 10 basins, the sea and the 12 oxen under it, the ash buckets, the shovels, and the bowls. Huram made all these things of burnished bronze for the temple of the Lord, just as King Solomon had directed. The king had them cast in clay molds in the Jordan Valley between Succoth and Jarethan. Solomon did not weigh all these things because there were so many. The weight of the bronze could not be measured. Solomon also made all the furnishings of the temple of the Lord, the gold altar, the gold table for the bread of the presence, the lampstands of solid gold, five on the south and five on the north, in front of the most holy place. The flower decorations, lamps and tongs, all gold, the small bowls, lamps, snuffer bowls, ladles and incense burners, all of solid gold, the doors for the entrances of the most holy place in the main room of the temple, with their fronts overlaid with gold. So King Solomon finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. Then he brought all the gifts his father David had declared, the silver, the gold, and the various articles. And he stored them in the treasures of the Lord's temple. And that's the end of 1 Kings chapter 7. So that was fun. And um, I hope you joined me. Can you just imagine how beautiful that that temple must have been? All gold, all the beauty of the Lord's presence in it. And the wisest man ever helping to construct it. I'm all flabbergasted just thinking about it. So I'm sure it was beautiful and I can't wait to see heaven because I know that this is nothing compared to what we're going to see.